You are now watching Dilio T2K. Dilio T2K. We are taking over. Now you may be saying to yourself, hold on man, I, saw, I thought Dilio you said that you didn't like the jam and stuff like that, or you didn't understand it. Well, well I, I guess I really didn't understand it and I had an opportunity to try it out. And here I am trying it out. And so this video is about my first thoughts with that. Now when I first saw the jam, I was like, okay, cool, lots of buttons. I mean, what producer doesn't like a lot of buttons? At the same time, there's a big grid of, of touch strips here. And then what was very interesting to me was that the touch strips were actually RGB lights in them. So each one of these touch strips can either be any color that you want. I'll be honest with you, when I saw the video of FL Studio with this, oh my God, you might've saw my comment on that video if you watched that video. For a long time, I've always thought, but well, FL Studio had a hardware controller that allows you to, to, to push the buttons in like how you can with the mouse, I'd be sold. When I finally did that function in machine, and I, I didn't really understand it because kind of, I'm thinking, okay, I want to produce this way. You know, this, this is what I thought I graduated to when I went from FL Studio to machine. But instead, you know, they kind of gotten back to this. So this one is, is definitely helpful for producers who kind of work in a different way. There's no LCD screens on it, so a lot of the functions that you push on will show up on the computer screen. It's kind of a different mindset, but I think it's really cool because it's a lot easier to kind of access your levels and mix with faders and, you know, and I was a little hesitant about touch strips because I'm like, I want some knobs to, to turn, you know, instead of touch strips, but they're actually pretty responsive and actually it's, it's cool because I was frustrated because it's like, why are you guys coming out with more hardware we can guys can improve the software here. There's some limitations that you can't really pull off with hardware like that, that you can here and vice versa. There's some things that you can do on this, you can't do on that, and vice versa, and vice versa. So having both at your disposal um, is more engaging, but it, it to me, and as I came from that video, it's a little expensive. You know, that's why I had the opportunity uh, to try this out. And I said, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll just show you the back. There's no MIDI on it, which is very interesting. What I mean by that is MIDI 5 pin, not USB. Obviously, we're, we're in the USB over MIDI and USB over Bluetooth generation now, so it's a little bit different. So let's talk about improvements. What would I have them do with this? Well, the same things I was asking them to do with this. You now have a way to kind of customize your chords, but not in the way I quite wanted it to go. What I mean by that is that you may have seen the other videos where they say, oh, you can strum your chords like this, up and down, Ooh, right? And also the chords show up on the lights above it when you're in this mode where you can strum chords. However, you can customize your chords here. You can strum them like that, but at the same time, I still wish I could just hit the pad and get all the notes out of the chord like that. Now, if I'm wrong, I'll be sure to put up an annotation correcting that, but it would be cool if I could just press down and play the custom chords that I designed, not strum them or anything like that, but just play them and they be in time with that. I can be more in sync to a machine recording what I'm doing if I'm pressing one of these pads, because these pads are very, they're boom, once you hit them, you got it, you're in there, you're good. But another main thing that this thing solves is the arrangement issues. And I'll give you a short story. Whenever I would make a beat on machine, when it gets to the time for me to arrange, you know what I would do? I would just stop working on the song because to me it was just so frustrating to kind of go in, pull parts in, pull parts out. On the jam, what happens is that you have the scenes over the top and then you can select your, your what you want to go in underneath very easily. Arranging is a lot faster and that problem of arranging is kind of solved here, but there are still more granular things I would like to be able to do that I feel like I should be able to do from the jam or the machine. Otherwise, so this is a cool, fun product. Um, it solves some of the problems that I feel like machine has right now. And, you know, I am i don't work for native instruments, so I can give a more of a subjective, not biased opinion. You know, I, you know, I don't work for them. So, I, you know, I guess I'm more at liberty to kind of say whatever I like that I don't like or, you know, that, hey, I'm not just trying to sell a product. But what I am doing and what I like to do on this channel is to share the products that I have. So, 
this is what I have right here. And uh, you know, I'll definitely be working on tracks like this. But those are my first thoughts. Maybe I might have forgot a few. I don't know. I hope I edited this video a little better than what I did before. But otherwise, stay tuned. Black Beatles is next for the next beat remake, and I'll see y'all soon.